This is a story of how a Roman Catholic priest started preaching total abstinence from alcohol and then called out the Bishop of Detroit for drinking minutes after signing an oath to never drink again. Hello church and welcome back to our series of book reviews from our resource desk. In today's video, I examine our booklet called Temperance. And in it, Charles Chinique tells a few stories of how much he hated alcohol in a day when alcohol was not really frowned on. I mean, it kind of sounds like our day today, doesn't it? We're gonna look at this Roman Catholic priest's first exposure to someone who was a total abstainer, a, a Protestant medical doctor. And then we'll look at a story of a drunken mother who killed her own child in a stupor. And last, we'll look at how Shinikwe's colleagues and their superiors tried to justify their drinking alcohol while they wanted the common people to stop. So the author, Charles Chinique, was a Roman Catholic priest in the mid 1800s. He was completely devoted to God. He loved the Lord, but he was so bothered by many of the teachings in his church that it eventually led him out of Catholicism and into Christianity. And these booklets that we have are just excerpts from his larger book called 50 Years in the Church of Rome. And so we've pulled out certain chapters and it was in chapter eight where, chap where Chinique talks about meeting a Protestant medical doctor, Dr. Douglas. And he poured a glass of brandy and drank it. And the doctor asked, why did you drink that? And Chinique said, it's a good preserving against the sickness of the air. I'm gonna be hearing confessions all day, so I need to take some precautions. And the doctor said, no, it's, it's poison. And by drinking it, you've made yourself more susceptible to the diseases out there. Chinique dismissed the doctor at first until a doctor invited him to come to an autopsy the next day. There was a sailor who had died and they were gonna cut into the body. And so when they cut into it the next day, the doctor showed Chinique how the man's arteries were so deteriorate, deteriorated by the alcohol it was piercing holes in the man's arteries. And then they got to the lungs that were covered in these white spots, these little white ulcers and little red spots. And every muscle throughout the man's body was weakened by the alcohol. And then they got to the stomach as, and, and realized how much the stomach hates the poison so that when it's drunk, it tries to disperse it throughout the body at first by vomiting. And once you get over that, then this dispersion is just trying to get it out of the stomach. And it was through that dispersion that led to this man's death. And the doctor went on to explain to Shinikwe much more than that. And then Shinikwe said, these bodies open before me were books written by the hand of God himself. And they spoke to me as no man could speak. By the mercy of God to that study is due the irresistible power of my humble efforts in persuading my countrymen to give up the use of intoxicating drinks. But here's the time to tell how my merciful God forced me, his unprofitable and rebellious servant, almost in spite of myself, to give up the use of intoxicating drinks. It was not only the medical side of alcohol that changed his mind, but the effect of people's lives. And he tells the story of a young mother from a good side of town, grew up with wine at the table. And so as a child learned to drink, first a little here and alert a little there, but then more and more until she became addicted to alcohol. And it wasn't until she was carrying her baby in her arms and she was in a drunken stupor that she stumbled and fell against the stove. And the baby's head hit the corner of the stove and all the weight of the mother fell upon it and killed her baby. And in this fit of despair, she's screaming and trying to slit her own throat and her husband grabs the knife just in time. And all through the night, she weeps and wails and begged this this body of the baby to come back to life. And the next morning, this, this woman who'd been agonizing all night collapsed right there in front of Shinikwe and blood began streaming from her mouth. And she died too, six hours after killing her own baby. 
Shinnequa said of that horrible incident, what I had just seen and heard could not be buried and forgotten in the grave. And the last chapter in our booklet tells of when the bishops of a nearby area had heard of Shinnequa's success in helping communities. Um, they were wanting the same thing in their Detroit community. And so they invited Shinnequa out to the De Detroit Cathedral to preach his messages on abstaining from alcohol. And he was scheduled for these five sermons or lectures calling the people to give up all intoxicating beverages. It ran in the newspapers and everything. Well, at his third sermon, the Bishop of Detroit heartily congratulates him after the sermon. They were very excited to have Mr. Shinnequa in for their temperance cause. And he takes him by the hand and leads him to the back to the dining room area where the other priests were. And he said, let's go refresh ourselves. And Shinnequa said, I shall never forget my surprise and dismay when I perceived the long dining table covered with bottles of brandy, wine, beer, etc., prepared for himself and his six or seven priests who were already around it, joyfully emptying their glasses. My first thought was to express my surprise and indignation and leave the room in disgust. But by a second and better thought, I waited a little to see more of that unexpected spectacle. I accepted the seat offered me by the bishop at his right hand. Father Shinnequa, he said, this is the sweetest claret you ever drank. And before I could utter a word, he'd filled my glass with, with wine and drank his own to my health. Looking at the bishop in amazement, I said, what does this mean, my lord? It means that I want you to drink the best claret you've ever tasted. Do you take me for a comedian? And have you called me here to play such a strange comedy? I had lips trembling with indignation. I did not invite you to play comedy, he answered. I invited you to lecture on temperance to my people, and you've done it in a most admirable way these last three days. Though you didn't see me, I was present at this evening's address. I never heard anything so eloquent on that subject as what you said. But now that you've fulfilled your duty, I must do mine, which is to treat you as a gentleman and drink that bottle of wine with you. But my Lord, allow me to tell you what I would not deserve to be called or treated as a gentleman were I vile enough to drink wine after the address I gave this evening. I beg your pardon for differing from you, answered the bishop. Those drunken people to whom you spoke so well against the evils of intemperance are in need of the stringent and bitter remedies you offer them in your teetotalism. But here we are sober men and gentlemen, and we do not want such remedies. I never thought that the physicians were absolutely bound to take the pills they administer to their patients. And then taking from my pocketbook his printed address and his public and solemn promise never to drink, neither to offer any intoxicating drinks to others, I read it aloud and said, Are you the same Bishop of Detroit called Lafrabe who's made this solemn promise? My dear Chinaque, I did not invite you to preach to the bishop, but only to the people of Detroit. And so that made for a very awkward meeting with the bishop the rest of that night and the rest of the week as he was preaching. But Shinnequay stood his ground and for the rest of the meetings, there was no more alcohol served after the evening services. So that's how that week went. Later on, Shinnequay received word some years later that the bishop had died a sad and miserable death having rejected his oath and return to the bottle. What a horrible poison that Shinnequay led thousands of people away from over the course of his life. And even today, we're still benefiting from his zeal in the subject. Quite an interesting read. And if you haven't read the booklet, I encourage you to do so. This is just excerpts from the larger book. And in our other videos, we discussed and covered some of the other uh, excerpts from the larger book. I encourage you to look at those videos. 
But until then, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for watching the video. I, I really pray that it can be a blessing to you and really help bring the Bible home. If it was a blessing and a help to you, would you consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel? And we look forward to seeing you in the next video.